Thanks, David, for inviting me for this talk, and thanks to Sages for allowing to speak about this. Now, I really don't have any financial disclosures, but I will disclose that I do hernia repairs with mesh, both open as well as minimally invasive. <laughs> so talking about, but I also do tissue repairs. Okay. So when David asked me to come and speak to you guys about tissue repair, this is how I felt. Okay. Sages, it's all minimally invasive, a lot of technology, and then, you know, go ahead, go talk to the lions in the Coliseum. <laughs> and I'm, I'm supposed to sell you a Fred Flintstone car with a, when you already drive the latest Bugatti. <laughs> okay. so, so is tissue repair passe? Has its time come and gone? Or should we start reconsidering tissue repair? Now all of you know that this is going on. We cannot hide from this. Every day you see litigation, every day you see advertisements from all kinds of lawyer, lawyer firms talking about mesh complications. Some of this, I took it off the internet, and it's not a resident giving a talk on mesh complication. These are law firms putting up, hey, if you have this, call us. And when you start getting a ribbon for a mesh survivor, you know that is, now this is real time now, okay? And it's not only on this side of the pond, Neil will say uh, across in, in UK it has become a big problem. In fact, it went as high as the parliament where there was a big hearing on MESH and its problem. And when it starts effect, affecting Olympic athletes and they start talking to you about MESH being a problem, then the layman starts wondering, do I really want a MESH? So what do we do? When a patient comes to me, I tell them, you know, we do use a MESH to repair. It has got good track record. It's been there for since the 80s, and you have a less than 2% recurrence rate. But is that all the patient is concerned about? They may be concerned about pain. They may be concerned about uh, discomfort. And we have to think about cost as well. Nobody can deny that a tissue repair is really cheap compared to a robotic repair. And what about immune response? There is this on the internet, just like anti vaxxers you know, think about, I'm sick because of the mesh, I've got this autoimmune disease. Thankfully, until now, there's no real evidence for this, but that doesn't mean we should stop looking. So what are the tissue repairs that are being done and are a little bit more popular? We have the shoulder eyes repair. I come from Canada. I used to be in Ontario, so I have to tout the shoulder eyes repair. It is an extremely good repair, as we will see later. Bassini set the tone of reinforcing the posterior wall, and it's a classic repair. It's a good repair, done well in the right group of patients. The Sarda came about in early 2000, and it has taken off. It's a, it's, there are clinics in, in, in US that offer the Sarda repair as the mesh repair, and MECWE is what we teach our residents. And why? Because it de deals with femoral as well as uh, inguinal hernia. It's a fairly simple repair where you open up the posterior wall and, and suture the conjoint tendon to the Cooper's ligament. It's got a good re track record too. There are studies that suggest the recurrence rate is less than 2%. May not be in your hands, but there are people who can do it with that level. So maybe we should learn how to do it like them. Like I said, Bassini set the standard back in the late 19th uh, century where he understood that we need to reinforce the posterior wall. So he did open the posterior wall and did a two-layered closure with a relaxing incision, and he said, my recurrence rates are less than 2%. Not mine, but Bassini said that. So, and he established the first hernia clinic back in Padua. It still exists, if I'm not mistaken. And then in 2000, Dasada came out from India, and he put forward a huge series of almost 860 patients. He published that after a year follow-up, none of them had recurrence, and his follow-up is about seven years. Now, this is too good to be true, I agree. No recurrence with this hernia repair, <coughs> time will tell. But in 2017, somebody compared with Liechtenstein, and they said it's equal to Liechtenstein, but they found that maybe the patients have less post-operative pain and get back to work faster. And last year, there was a meta-analysis where they looked at six randomized controlled trials with almost 2,000 patients comparing DASADA to Liechtenstein repairs. 
they did not find any difference in the incidence of recurrence between the both the techniques. And there may be a slightly higher SSI rate or seroma rate with Liechtenstein. Now, coming back to Shouldice technique, like I say, I'm from Canada, I have to, and I know the folks in Shouldice well, and I've learned Shouldice from them. And it is a very good technique. Long time ago when I was doing residency, this was the technique that we all envisioned doing because this was the standard of care, less than 2% recurrence rate. And when eventually Liechtenstein came about with his technique, they were going for less than 2% recurrence rate. Now, what shoulder techniques is, is simply a bursini on steroids. So what he did was take a two-layer closure to a four-layer closure and reinforce the posterior wall really strongly. He used steel wires. They still use steel wire in shoulder clinic, although you can use proline sutures and it works just as well. There's a less than 2% recurrence rate. We all think it's a tension repair, and so how does it pit against the tension-free repair. In 2016, a group from Toronto studied recurrence, rate of recurrent hernia repairs, and they compared high-volume general hospitals in Ontario versus low-volume general hospitals, as well as Shouldice Clinic. Now, most of the repairs done in Ontario are mesh repairs. It's either a Liechtenstein or a plug-and-patch and a small proportion may be minimally invasive. And if you can see the numbers, Shouldice Clinic did really well, 1.15% recurrence rate, compared to a high volume, which would be a quartile four hospital, which had 4.7% recurrence rate. And when you look, when you graph it out, prospectively, in probability of repair, recurrence of hernia is much lower with the Shouldice Clinic. Now, those of you who have had patients from Shouldice Clinic or send patients to Shouldice Clinic will, may say, well, they choose their patients carefully. They don't do overweight patients. They don't do this. They don't do that. That is true. But when this group analyzed the data, they said that the results cannot be fully explained just on the basis of surgical volume or patient selection or other confounding factors. So it seems to be real that the repair does work very well. So is it comparable to the minimally invasive repairs? Most of you here may favor a minimally invasive technique, uh, tap or tap, and how does it repair? How does shoulder uh, bear against it? So last year there was a publication from the Hernia Med Registry where they looked at the, a whole bunch of patients. They matched pairs with uh, propensity uh, score matching. They compared shoulder ice with Liechtenstein, shoulder ice with TAP, and shoulder ice with TAP. And you can see that each group had about 2,000 match pairs. None of them had any difference. So shoulder ice versus Liechtenstein, there was no significant difference in all the outcomes we look at. Not with TAP, not with TAP. So recurrence rate, post-operative pain, pain and exertion at one year, none of them were different between shoulder ice and the minimally invasive techniques. So they concluded that in certain groups, again, this may be a tailored approach where younger, non-overweight patients with defect sizes up to 3 cm, you can use the shoulder ice technique to repair, and they have good outcomes. What about women? This is one of the controversial things when uh, Hernia Surge came out with their guidelines that they said all young women, we should do a minimally invasive technique because you may miss femoral hernias. So this is hot off the press, it's just on EPUB publication. The same group looked at women, 15,000 women between the September 2009 and 2017, who these women completed a one year follow up and primary, primary was a unilateral groin hernia using either Liechtenstein, shoulder ice, tap and tap techniques. Again, no negative influence on the outcome was identified for the tap, tap, or shoulder ice. Whereas with Liechtenstein, they felt there was a higher risk of post-operative complications, complication-related re reoperations, recurrences, and pain on exertion. Again, shoulder ice technique comes out 
Like, it is a good technique. There is a caveat though, these were patients who did not have femoral hernias. But if you do a shoulder eyes technique, you are opening the posterior wall, you will identify a femoral hernia. So you will not miss a femoral hernia. Then comes the issue of pain. And there are proponents of tissue repairs who will say with tissue repair, there's less pain. And then there are people who do mesh repairs say there's actually no difference. I think the jury is out because there are two components of pain. One is nociceptive and the other is neuropathic. In terms of neuropathic pain, if we catch a nerve, you can catch it with mesh or with tissue repair. The literature is all over in chronic pain and you can look at the numbers and the literature and there are various reports and it can go up as high as 30% in some papers. Even with laparoscopic repair, some people have reported up to 25% of pain, but I think this was a time where there was indiscriminate tacking. We would tack everything everywhere and make sure the mesh did not move ever, even if the patient was buried. But that's, that's by the wayside now. Now we tend not to actually fixate the mesh, or at least some of us. 2016, the group from Rotterdam did, pu did publish that in the hands of expert hands, there's still about a 7% incidence of pain with Liechtenstein repair. But what causes the pain? And this is a question we have to ask. Is it just nerve entrapment alone? There are some studies that suggest there is more to it, that when you use a mesh, there is ingrowth of nerves into the mesh and that can cause pain. And this study comes from mesh that has been explanted with patients with groin pain. But we all know about this, this other phenomena where patients complain they have feeling of a foreign body in the groin they have feel that mesh is rolled up like a ball. Patients who have a plug and patch repair, which is why most of us who like a mesh repair go to a flat mesh and hit the plug, where it forms a ball and the patient feels when they sit down, something is pressing against them. And there's the issue of mesh migration. You will never get mesh migration with a tissue repair. Cost, the mesh, cost versus a suture cost, it's, there, there's no argument there. Tissue repair is much cheaper. So in, in summary, tissue repair is still a good repair. If you do a good shoulder eyes repair in the right group of patients, you will get good results. And so we will have to learn to tailor the repair. It is a cost-effective repair. And most importantly, and I, I see this in IHC, people post, well, a patient wants a tissue repair, and the answer would be, ah, oh, they're crazy. I tell them to go away, I won't do this. With it. No, patient has a right to ask. Patient is worried, they are not crazy, they are afraid. I just showed you the slide of the number of litigations, the number of problems that is out there, and part of it may be fake news, but the reality is some patients do have a problem. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me, and this September we do have the Canadian Hernia Society is meeting with the Canadian Surgical Forum, and. You guys are all welcome there. And you can attend a workshop where you can learn a shoulder eyes repair as well. Thank you.